The bond between firefighters is unique in all the world. The firehouse, home away from home for men and women who depend on each other for their very lives. On September 11th, this firehouse, home to New York City's Rescue One, lost more men in a single day than in 85 years of service. Citywide, 343 firefighters perished in the murderous attacks. 37 Port Authority police, 23 New York City police officers, and more than 3,000 innocent civilians. But amid all the terrible endings, we'll tell you about one remarkable beginning. Here again is Bill Legatuda. Eleven members of Rescue One, every member who answered the initial call that morning, died in the World Trade Center. They left behind mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, seven wives, 16 children. I think he, he knows, I, th I feel like he's still around and seeing how we are. The body of Katrina Marino's husband, Kenny, has not been found. His son Tyler is just one, their daughter Kristen is four. I told her she's, daddy's very special. Because he's our hero. And he tried to save a lot of other daddies so they could go home with their little girls. Other heroes lost that day were firefighters Michael Montesi, Gary Guidel, Brian Sweeney, Patrick O'Keefe, Lieutenant Dennis Mojica, Jerry Nevins, and Bill Henry. Bill's sister, Ellen James, says if he had to die, it should have been on the job and with his friends. They're very tight, very close-knit, very close. But then again, you have to be because you're living with somebody. You know, you live with them, you eat with them, you, you go share your life with them, and sometimes you die together. And so, you know, that's just part of the job. It's, just, it's a beautiful thing, as my brother would say. Yeah. Miss my brother, really do, really do. Rookie Todd Smith will miss his friend, Dave Weiss. Dave Weissel, uh, when I first got there, used to say, um, this is what we do for a living. Take a deep breath, we'll get it done. Also on that day, the city lost a genuine piece of firefighting history. Joe Angelini. A legend. A legend? A legend. They brought his fire helmet. One of his um, firemen he worked with found it at the site. And they told me not to clean it, and they wouldn't clean it because Joe liked being dirty. This is Royal Trade Center dust. Mm. It's heavy, too. Feel this. Yes. Rescue one. Yeah. I feel honored holding it. I feel like you should <laughs> hold it, not me. <laughs> when Joe Angelini started fighting fires, John F. Kennedy was president. Add his years on the job to the others from Rescue One who died, and the total is more than 200 years of firefighting experience lost. And then there was Captain Terry Hatton. While all of the men from Rescue One will be hailed as heroes, Captain Hatton was special. Because he loved this city so much and knew it so well, his men had a nickname for him. Captain Manhattan. That's what the guys on Rescue One nicknamed him. We'd have gone anywhere with him and we would have done anything for him. Terry was um, bigger than life, for real. <laughs> Mayor Rudy Giuliani knew <laughs> Terry Hatton well. He was a very fine person. He was an exceptional firefighter. He, he received 19 medals in 21 years as a firefighter. And it, beyond that, he was just a really, really, really nice guy. I mean, he was somebody that you would love to go to dinner with. And Mayor Giuliani knew Terry's wife, Beth Patron. She worked for him, and not just in any job my secretary and administrative assistant for 18 years. 
and he was more than just her boss. When Beth Patron and Terry Hatton decided to get married, it would be the mayor doing the honors. Well, let's talk about the marriage. 1998, you performed the ceremony. I performed the ceremony at Gracie Mansion. I couldn't have been a couple more beautiful than this couple. He was a big, tall, handsome guy, and Beth is a beautiful woman. This was a storybook romance. Yeah, it was a storybook romance there. She was very much in love with him, and he doted on her. On September 11th, where was Beth? Beth was here at City Hall, and when she saw me, she told me she thought I was missing. So she seemed very concerned about me. She walked her off to the side, and I looked at her, and all of a sudden, I said to myself, was Terry at work? I knew if he was at work. He'd have been there. I'd been right in the middle of it. And I said to her, was Terry at work? And she just started crying. So when it came time to eulogize Captain Terry Hatton, his friend the mayor was there again to do the honors. But Hatton's death isn't the end of this storybook romance. Hatton's mother Grace, his father, retired fire chief Kenneth Hatton, learned just a few days after his death that their daughter-in-law was pregnant. And she's gonna have a baby in May. I guess the hardest part is when we talk about it is that he didn't know it. She only found out about it. Uh, uh, a few days afterwards. And it'll be called Terry, whether it's a boy or a girl. This is the kind of thing that it, you can either view as, as hopeful a miracle or it could really break your heart when you hear this. Uh, how should we? I think, you, I think you have to view it as a miracle. In times like this, which are you know, times of a lot of tragedy and a lot of stress, and you, you have to seize the, the beautiful things in life and make the most of it. And um, the fact that these two wonderful people are gonna have a child is a beautiful thing, it's a miracle. Still ahead, Rescue One's new lease on life. It's going to be the best fire truck that ever hit the streets of New York City. Also, as they were rushing in, he was rushing out. Imagine turning on a gas grill and letting the gas fill up and then throwing in a match. One man's great escape coming up. <laughs> 